I left off last time with the motor installed and we powered it up for the first time. Now the motor is mounted on a piece of plywood that swings on a pair of hinges. And these are just regular door hinges. And what this does is it allows the motor to swing up and down with the arbor as you raise and lower it. The way I want to adjust the cut angle on this saw uh, is to just grab the adjusting handle, loosen it, and then swing the saw to whatever degree I want to cut at, and then tighten it up again. However, the motor weight is a problem for that, so that's the reason why I made what you're looking at right here which is a trampoline spring attached to a lever. And what this does is it actually lifts the motor as it swings up towards 90 degrees. So that it'll be easier to adjust that angle. With that done, the inside of the saw is mostly finished. So what I did was I took it out back and I painted it white. And when that was dry, I went over it again with clear water-based polyurethane. With it back in the shop, I could get the lift crank put back on, and I made the tilt adjust handle and got that put on, along with the pointer that will line up with the scale that I'll mark out later. And now with that done, I can show you exactly how that spring and lever mechanism helps to support the motor. Next, I got an additional support for the top installed. And then I made a plywood box for the power switch and got that mounted on the left side of the saw. The plywood that I'm cutting here is to make a pair of rails that will go on the front and the back of the saw to help support the top. And then I can get the top cut the size. And this material is plastic. It's called Starboard. And if you're wondering about the availability and the price, I had to special order this and it wound up being pretty expensive. So while it is a really good material to use for this, I can't recommend it if you're looking for the lower cost option. Making the top from half inch Baltic birch plywood would be absolutely fine. Before fastening the top, I did some fine tuning to the frame underneath to make sure that it's sitting flat. And then I carefully laid out where the hole would be for the blade to come through for the insert. And then I made a template from quarter inch plywood to route that out.
With the blade lowered and the new insert plate put in, I can make the first official cut. Now what I'm doing here is I'm taking the fence off the blue top table saw to temporarily put on the new saw. I'm gonna be making a new fence for the new saw, but I need one on there in the meantime to do that. To install it on the new saw, I need to trim a little bit off the rail. And I'm just using my straight edge guide clamped down to the top to do that. And then as if to prove the value of a good fence system, I had to cut it again because I didn't put the straight edge guide in the right place. All right, we're in the home stretch now. There's not much left to do. What I'm doing here is I'm routing the miter slots and I've got the fence set up to do that, but I'm using a piece of aluminum beside it as a straight edge. The face of my fence has some cuts in it and some dings, and I certainly don't want that to transfer to the miter slots. Now after making that first center cut in the second slot, I'm going to measure it to make sure that these are actually parallel, because that's very important. Here I'm using the block plane that I recently repaired to slightly chamfer the corners. And I will say this about this plastic, it's really nice to work with. I mean it cuts straight and it routes perfectly, and you can even use a hand plane on it like I'm doing here. After that, I spent some time fine tuning the saw to make sure that it's cutting properly. And then I marked out the tilt angle scale that's on the front of the saw. Now there are a few minor things left to do, but at this point the saw is finished and ready to use. Mm -hmm. 